This is just one video of a multi-part course where I overview different animation software to determine which software is best for you. This is a free course and you can gain access on tunefiles.com and I also have premium courses that go deeper as well. I hope you learned something and enjoy. Character Animator is probably the most interesting entry on this list because it really operates differently compared to other software. Moho and Animate, as an example, have similarities in how the bones and the layer parenting work between those two pieces of software. But here with Character Animator, you can go in and control a character using your webcam, a microphone, your mouse. You can also use your body. You can tilt your head. You can do all sorts of things, such as binding your different actions to keys if you want your character to wave at a certain point. There's just a lot of options here when it comes to working inside a character animator. And you can set up a rig inside of the software, either by using a PSD or Illustrator file. It will break down the layers as you have them. You can label the layers either inside of Photoshop or Illustrator, or you can label them inside of the character animator software itself. And by labeling things, you can then have the software auto detect. The same goes for when you move your pupils, when you blink, when you move your eyebrows, all that will be tracked after you successfully go in and tag everything the way it needs to be tagged. And in addition to using your camera and mic, you can also use the keyboard and mouse as I may have mentioned. But I would say the biggest claim to fame is the ability to use the camera and mic. The software seems like it was built for non-animators in mind in some ways. And that's not a knock at the software at all. I feel it makes animation more approachable in many ways and opens the door for many other possibilities for other artists and enthusiasts to jump in and show us what their creativity can do. So I think it's great. Now, when it comes to rigging the character, it works similar to how you set up the puppet pin rigs inside of After Effects. You can lay down the points in which your rig will be doing certain things. You can label, for instance, where you want your feet, where you want the hands, and all of that. And by going in and doing such things and then laying down what are called draggers, you can create bone-like movements with your limbs. And this, again, is probably the easiest out of all the software we've discussed. The software just seems to know how to set these limbs up so that they don't break when bending. And you do have the ability to go in and stiffen up other joints and other various things to make sure that it's working the way you have intended. In addition to the bones or the bone-like structure, we can swap out different emotions such as your mouth. And you can do this for basically anything. So let's say there's a certain point where you want something on the character to change. Maybe he's wearing a hat in the next scene or he or she has a cell phone in the next scene. You can turn that on or off at any point. Or as I suggested, you could have multiple mouths. So you could auto sync all of your mouths up so they're all running. And then if you want to have the character look like he's frowning, you can just swap to it. If you want him to be happy, just swap to it. And since it's all auto synced, it's all good to go. And you can just keep running with it and choose when you want to change those things. And the auto lip syncing is great. It's very accurate. And if you need to, you can always go in and tweak such things. So if the phoneme is off or a sound isn't quite registering, you can go in and very easily swap out the certain shape that the mouth is making to make sure it's more accurate. But most of the time when I use character animator for my own projects, I'll just bring in a set of mouths and do auto lip syncing export those mouths as PNG sequences and then bring it into something like Moho and my character has his mouth synced and ready to go. It's not like I even have to think about it because the software does such a good job of auto syncing it. And there are other optional behaviors you can add to your rigs as well, such as different physics for wind. You can add automated walk cycles and run cycles and the list really goes on and on. And there's other custom functions you can play with once you become more familiar with the software. And while the software is easy to use in terms of laying down animation, 
I do find working with a timeline to be a little bit cumbersome. While you can fine-tune certain things, I wish you did have more control over other things. Sometimes I wish I could just isolate keyframes and move a limb the way I want it to, but it feels like you have to always record live in order to get those actions to play out and record effectively. And again, this is something that you can learn over time. It's more of a learning curve on my part because I'm so used to how other animation software works. But for a newcomer to animation who jumps into character animator for the first time, they'll probably actually have an easier time with these aspects of the software. And you can go further with this. For instance, you can take your character animator rigs and bring them into After Effects natively without having to export out a video or PNG sequence in advance. And speaking of those other files, you can import PNG sequences and videos and audio files straight into character animator and have those built right into your scenes. Even if you wanted to have, let's say, a background image, you can easily do that, or different props and that sort of thing. You can import multiple characters, and you can create multiple scenes in one project, similar to how Animate works. And finally, although I haven't touched on this too much, you do have the ability to stream your animations as well. So you could set up a live stream somewhere, and you could have your character act as your avatar as you talk in do your thing, he or she will, of course, mimic those actions, and that's something you can do and explore as you become more familiar with the software. So if you're looking to create animations using a quick and simple workflow, and if you are maybe not as familiar with the animation process, or you're looking to really spice up the animation process, then you might want to turn your attention towards Character Animator. Again, one of the good things about this is if you do decide to try Character Animator, you can subscribe to the Creative Cloud and then you can try Animate and After Effects if you want as well and then decide between all those if that's something you wish to pursue and go from there. And again, you can combine all of these different pieces of software as well, which is also something I highly recommend. You don't always have to do everything in one software. As an example, I, as I said, do lip syncing sometimes in Character Animator and bring it over to Moho. And that works really well for me. So again, it's good to explore all the software at your disposal, but it's also more important to use the one primarily you are comfortable with. And if Character Animator speaks to you, then I highly recommend it.